The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Joanne Backshaw is a professor of psychology and women's studies at Montgomery College. Her research interests include mindfulness and contemplative pedagogy and the science of relationships. She is also interested in the intersections of feminism and politics, sexuality, violence, race, class, and reproduction. Joanne's blog, The Third Wave, is featured on Psychology Today, and she is a licensed professional counselor in Maryland and New York with a part-time therapy practice focused on sex and relationship therapy. She receives her bachelor's degree in psychology from Long Island University, Southampton, a master's degree in forensic psychology from John Jay College of Criminal Justice, and a PhD in general psychology from Capella University. Hello everyone. I'm very happy to be sharing my fellowship experience with you today. I chose uh, to use the fellowship as an opportunity to explore the connections between mass incarceration and slavery from a social justice perspective. The 13th Amendment states that neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except as punishment for crime whereof the parties shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. The 13th Amendment abolished slavery with the exception of using slavery as punishment for a crime. And that loophole has allowed the uh, incarceration and criminalization of African Americans post-emancipation. The United States leads the world in mass incarceration. We also lead the world in racial disparity. So one in three black men will be incarcerated in their lifetime. One in six Latino men will be incarcerated in their lifetime compared to one in 17 white men. One in 45 Latino women will be incarcerated in their lifetime. One in 18 black women will be incarcerated in their lifetime compared to one in 111 white women. For certain groups in America, it is inevitable that they will be incarcerated. Mass incarceration is a social justice issue because we are no longer incarcerating the individual. We're incarcerating members of social groups. And so it was these topics of incarceration and race and slavery that we explored in my Psych 213 Criminal and Legal Psychology class, also known as forensic psychology in some circles. Um, and in this class, we look at how psychological principles and research can be used uh, or applied in the legal system or to help assist in answering legal questions. Most of the students in this, that come to this class are psychology students, but I also get a percentage of criminal justice students which uh, allows for a very interesting conversation coming from two different perspectives in the classroom. Some of the topics that we explore in this class include competency hearings, fitness for duty, evaluations for police officers, the use of expert testimony, jury selection, the juvenile justice system, eyewitness testimony. And so I incorporated the theme of mass incarceration in with all of these topics. Um, to make the topic a little bit more broad, what we chose to do was to answer the question, what is the purpose of mass incarceration in the United States? Psych 213 is a hybrid flipped class. Um, and so what that means is that part of the work the students do is completed online before they even come to class. Um, assigned readings, online discussion board, and then while in class, rather than having me lecture, we're applying what they learned in the readings through activities. And in terms of the content that I included in the class that's related to mass incarceration, I also included in-class speakers, we had a civil rights trial attorney, a detective, and a jury consultant. Um, their readings outside of class that were related to mass incarceration included reading the books The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander and Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson. 
They also had service learning opportunities. Um, they were able to mentor youth in the DA's truancy program and also work with youth who were awaiting trial. And uh, that's really an important component in this class because these youth without intervention are likely to be incarcerated later in their life. They also had weekly readings in our videos with content focused specifically on mass incarceration. And of course, we had the Smithsonian Museum visits. Um, students visited either the National Museum of African American History and Culture or the National American History Museum. For the National uh, Museum of African American History and Culture, students, I asked them to focus exclusively in the slavery exhibit. There really isn't enough time. Uh, I think that that museum is really four different trips. Um, <laughs> so I asked them to focus on finding two objects that they felt represent a connection between mass incarceration and slavery. And I also wanted to include uh, a mindfulness activity. And because I'm a psychologist, I asked them to uh, identify their feelings. I had to bring feelings into it. Um, so I asked them when they, when they chose their object to take a few moments to observe the object, notice how it makes them feel, write it down. Um, if they don't know what it feels like, a lot of people don't know what they're feeling, to at least write down what their body feels like. Write down why they chose the object, take photos of the object. For the American History Museum visit, I asked students to reflect on this quote before going to the museum. American democracy is inspired by ideals of active and equal citizenship, yet racial and class inequalities run through the heart of our criminal justice system. And I asked them to visit the following uh, exhibits, the American Democracy exhibit, the Many Voices, One Nation exhibit, and Righting a Wrong, Japanese Americans, and World War II. They were to answer two questions in their visit. One, does uh, mass incarceration, or find one object to answer the following question, does mass incarceration threaten American democracy? Um, and also to find two objects that represent similarities between mass incarceration and Indian removal and Japanese internment camps. Additionally, they were to follow the same reflection guidelines as the previous museum. So following the museum visits, we incorporated what they found in our classroom discussions. Um, so they presented their photos, they talked about what they found, why they found it. It was informal rather than having them come up and do presentations. And this way the entire class was involved in their experience because each student's experience in the museum was different. The class, uh, I incorporated a final assignment where they had to uh, answer according to their perspective what is the purpose of mass incarceration and in that assignment were several questions related to uh, the museums but particularly the reflection question how did your museum visit help you understand the problem of mass incarceration in the United States and here are some quotes from students taken from those papers from Genesis the museum gets you thinking about the real matters we should be discussing and fighting for and from Alex the museum's layout allowed me to observe the rapid transition from slavery to incarceration and therefore made it difficult to believe that the use of mass incarceration as a tool of racial control was anything but intentional. Tracing the history of African Americans made clear that incarceration has been used to continue the subjugation of black people in America. The museum helped me see how mass incarceration and slavery are similar because both are about race and people being dehumanized. Slavery was inherited through generations and so is mass incarceration. Slaves were stri stripped of their rights and so are prisoners. So in summary, the museum visits provided students the opportunity to draw connections between the topics of mass incarceration, slavery, and democracy based on their own feelings and reactions to the exhibits. Thank you.